Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 10.2. We're going to go into some definitions here, talk about what solutions really are. Solid and liquid, liquid and liquid, etc., etc. Different types of solution. Explain the difference among unsaturated, saturated, and supersaturated solutions. Explain the process by which solutions form, and explain why like dissolves like, and find out why uh, mud on your tires is not a solution. Let's get started. Water is rarely pure, but often a solution. A solution remembers a homogeneous mixture, which means every sample is the same. Okay, So it doesn't matter where you take the sample from. If I take it from the top, it's the same as if you take it from the bottom. From the same, take it on the right, the left, the left. Blah, blah. So all the samples are the same. The homo means same. Genius means uh, sample, I guess. So... They can be a solid and a solid. A solid and a solid is an alloy, like steel or bronze. A solid and a liquid is like salt water. We did today in class. Um, liquid and a liquid, here's water and vinegar. They mix and they dissolve. A gas and a liquid is like a carbonated beverage, carbonated beverage, carbonated beverage, um, where you have like carbon dioxide and water. Ah. And there's two parts. There's the solute, which is the smaller part. And the solvent, which is the biggest part. And the other way to describe these things is the solvent is what dissolves. And the solute is what is dissolved. So, for example, if I have salt water, salt would be the solute, smaller part, it dissolves. And solvent, water dissolves the solute. That would be water. Miscible is two liquids. Two liquids are called miscible because it's hard to tell which one's the dissolver and which one's the dissolve E. So if two liquids dissolve in each other, they are called miscible. Types of solutions. All solutions are homogeneous mixture. So here we go. We did these examples, which is what I just did. So look at that. Oh, a gas and a gas. I didn't talk about that. Oxygen and N2, that's what we breathe in. We go, <gasps> we breathe in 80% N2 and 20%. O2, and we breathe out 80% N2, and a bunch of other stuff like carbon dioxide, and I don't know what else, probably just carbon dioxide. So what dissolves? Polar dissolves in polar. Remember, polar means ended. So there's a positive end and a negative end, right? Nonpolar dissolves in nonpolar. Polar does not dissolve in nonpolar. So... There you go. Why did the white bear dissolve in water? It was polar. Because <laughs> water's polar. <laughs> so why did the witch dissolve and threw a bucket of water in it? Well, if water's polar, the witch must be polar. And then we can describe this a little bit better, I think. Yep. Um, dissolving. Electrostatic attraction. These are the fancy words for positives. Love negatives. These little Mickey Mouse looking things right here are water. And if you notice, we've got green and blue doodads here. So these guys are positive and notice how oh, they're the positive ones now these guys are negative whoops there is that these guys are negative and you notice how the white parts the positive parts of water love this so if they love it they form bonds to it so electrostatic attraction positive love negative this is a big honking negative and then the little positives of water do that so a whole bunch of little positives break it away now we know that these guys are positive and these guys are negative so if these are strong bonds, and they are, why would they break away? Well, the reason why they break away is you have bajillions of water molecules surrounding it and pulling it away. So this could be, you know, potentially the love of your life. Oh, I love you so much. We're going to be happy forever. And then, you know, 50, I don't know, CD, CD individuals try and woo your the love of your life away, and sometimes it works. So why do nonpolar things dissolve in nonpolar things? Because nonpolar things have no positives and no negatives. There's no repulsion, so they just mix. Remember, there's energy of motion, and that energy of motion makes them just kind of scramble around a little bit. And there's a little bit of attraction due to London dispersion force, but really not enough that makes a difference. So if a dry cleaning solvent dissolves nonpolar oil, the solvent is, so if it dissolves, it's going to dissolve the same thing. The solvent is nonpolar. If butanol dissolves in polar water, if we know water is polar, and it dissolves, it must be polar as well. How do solutions form? 
So in order for a solution to form, let's say I have a couple of salt crystals here next to each other, and they are attached by ionic bonds. Okay. So what has to happen is the solute-solute bonds break, so the sugar-sugar has to break. Remember, breaking bonds is endothermic, which means it requires energy. Solvent-solvent bonds break. Because remember, water loves itself too. So water has positive and negative ends, so it's attracted to itself. So again, I'm breaking bonds. That's going to be endothermic as well. Solute-solvent bonds form. This releases energy and makes solution warm and happy. And most of the time, that's true. That's true like 99% of the time. So what happens is these things are a happy couple. These things are a happy couple. But what happens is they break up and form new relationships. Goodbye. I'm dumping you. Hello, stick man. Woo! Some ionics don't dissolve. Why not? How many dates does it take for you to dump your KOH date? So what happens is, um, why some ionics don't dissolve, why not? The reason why they don't dissolve is the positive and negative bonds are stronger than attraction than the attraction to water. Water's still attraction. Attractive, pardon me. Kind of like if you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, you can still go, oh, that person's attractive, but not enough that you would leave your boyfriend or girlfriend for them. And the attraction to water. Everyone says water's attractive. Yep, water's attractive, just not good enough for you to dump your date. So see that? That is true love right there. Oh, because she wears a much better shirt than this lady. <laughs> I wish I had those shirts. Soap. Soap helps dirt dissolve. Now notice, well, soap helps dirt dissolve. Soap has a polar end. The polar end is right here. Polar, notice the negative part. Polar end to dissolve in water. And a nonpolar, this is the nonpolar. If you recall way back when, when we talked about polar and nonpolar molecules, C's and H's are nonpolar. And notice how this is called a nonpolar tail. Okay. And it has a polar end to dissolve in water, so it's polar, so H2O dissolves. That's a V. And a nonpolar end dissolve dirt, grime, goo, etc. So hydrophobic means I'm afraid of water. This is the phobic part. And hydrophilic, I love you water. Philic means love. So philic, phobic, and tail. Okay. Like still dissolves like. So what happens is um, this part will dissolve in water, this part will dissolve the funk, and you just rinse it away. Okay, doesn't make it go away, it just gets it in the water, and then if you let the water come out of it, then you have soap and grime or goo. A solution, a solution. A solution is a homogeneous mixture of many different states. Now, not at once, it could be, but solid is a small part, solvent is a big part, solution is all the parts. Supersaturation is an overachiever. Oops, I don't think I put that in there, did I? I forgot to talk about that. That's coming up in the next podcast anyway. So that's exciting thing you can just wait to get to. So polar dissolves polar and nonpolar dissolves nonpolar. And soap will dissolve the mud off your tires if you mix it with water. Toodle.